what it is, everybody. It's time for a death battle. About to get into this Samurai Jack versus Afro Samurai. Now, I've been saying they need to do this since. Not since Afro Samurai came out, but I want to say around the time they did Batman versus Captain America. I think I've been saying them because because uh, we got because we got two skilled samurai. Now Jack, I know I, I remember uh, trying to remember the show. I know he has a mystical like blade but it only it's only really effective against was it Aku I think it was the name Aku and to everybody else is really just a sword so but he's an extremely skillful samurai now anybody who's seen Afro Samurai know he's a skillful samurai that motherfucker cuts he, he's the adult version of Samurai Jack minus the the mystical sword and the magic is more cybernetics and I don't think there was ever any magic. I remember it was because I don't know what time period it takes place in. It, Afro Samurai is one of those. It's like one. Of, well, it was kind of like a short series. Like I want to say, but uh, it's it's kind of like one. It's kind of like a. I want to say not the Rocketeer, but it was another movie. Uh, Sky Commander or Sky Captain or some of that. It was like it, it was like it takes place in the 40s, but they have technology closer to around like the 1980s. Or something. It's almost like advancements in technology kept going, but the the lifestyle has kind of stayed the same. It'll be like we had still all the technological advancement that we have today, except everything still looks the, the look still looks like we lived in the forties, and Afro Samurai is like almost like because I thought it was when I first saw it, I thought it was it was like feudal Japan, but then they have people with you know cybernetic implants and like enhanced by cybernetics and stuff like that. So it's really weird. But for me, I think I'm gonna go with Afro Samurai. I really like Jack. I really like Samurai Jack, but. This is tough. I'm, I'm going to go with Afro for right now. After the analysis, I might switch or I might just stay. But we'll see. But anyway, let's get into this video. Oh. And here we go. Among the soldiers of history, the samurai is one of the most prestigious and dangerous. So let's pit two of the best of them in a fight to the death. Samurai Jack, the warrior prince lost in time. And Afro Samurai, who's one cold-blooded mother ever. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win oh, a death battle. Bad. Long ago, in a distant land, Aku, the shape-shifting master of darkness, unleashed an unspeakable evil. But a foolish samurai warrior wielding a magic sword stepped forth to oppose me. I, I mean him. And that nameless samurai became known as... Jack. Jack! Jack was out! Jack! Jack! Yo! Jack! Jack was Jack! 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 Doesn't really strike fear into your enemies. Young Jack was the son of a Japanese emperor who had imprisoned Aku years before. However, upon Aku's return, the emperor and his army were quickly defeated. The last of all hope remained in the hands of his son. Oh, look how small he is! <coughs> well, uh, to prep for beating the snot out of Aku, little Jack traveled the world, training with the best of the best. Most notably, he learned horseback riding from a shape, staff fighting in Africa, wrestling from gladiators, axe throwing from a Russian boyar, mounted combat from the Mongols, martial arts from Shaolin monks, and... And archery from freaking Robin Hood! You know, everyone's favorite talking fucks. Ooh, da lolly. Yeah. Wrong Robin Hood. That's your opinion. 
Jack's progress was exceptional. At just eight years old, he defended a whole village from a band of marauders. All before he could even legally drink the good stuff. 17 years later, he was ready for the final boss. He just needed one more thing. His pajamas. No, 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 his katana. Katana, pajama, tomato, Alfredo, it's all the same. But before Jack could put his training to good use, Aku pulled a bitch move and zapped him hundreds of years into the future. Watch out. What a waste. Just like when you spend four sleepless years struggling through college and then find out too late that nobody cares about your English major. I thought you graduated from the school of evil science or something. Well, you still have to pick a major. Should have chose a more practical one, Wiz, like mine. Anyway, even though he was trapped in the future, Jack stuck to his mission to get back to the past and take down Aku. And he had the right weapon for the job. See, Aku cannot be harmed by conventional means. Thus, a special blade was forged by gods from Norse, Egyptian, and Hindu pantheons. This mystic sword is nearly unbreakable and absolutely incorruptible. And boy, is Jack's katana an extremely effective weapon. It can absorb and redirect energy, including fire, vaporize beings of evil, and slice through nearly any substance, even adamantium. The Wolverine Super Metal? Why is that there? Uh, probably just coincidental naming, but it is shown to be stronger than steel. Of course it is. So the sword's pretty awesome, but so is Jack. He's strong enough to push over this giant pillar, tough enough to survive a fall from orbit, and fast enough to defeat six bounty hunters in the time it took for one drop of water to hit the ground. By timing the drop, all this had to have taken place in about one third of a second. He's like a ninja samurai. Ninja Marai. Actually, he is trained in ninjutsu, which probably helped when he was forced to dodge beams of sunlight. For this one in particular, it's clear Jack began dodging after the beam was fired. By examining both Jack and the beam's movement frame by frame, we've concluded his highest reaction speeds must be nearly 70% the speed of light. Damn, that's fast. What can he do? Next thing you'll tell me, he has the power to fly or something. Well, Jack can't fly, but he did learn how to... Jump curb. Uh, yes, that. By strapping a giant boulder on his back, which compared to his height we can determine to weigh 39 tons, Jack learned how to leap high oh. enough to clear these trees. Crouching tiger hidden samurai! These trees are pretty big, and this jungle has a bunch of these ugly baboons running around. And if I were a betting man, which I am, I'd say that this is the African rainforest, where the average tree is about 130 feet tall. Tibs on Jack from my basketball team. Guy's got hops. We haven't even mentioned the time he survived several exploding missiles with his friend, the Scotsman. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Why does he look so familiar? Well, I like him. With so much talent, it was only a matter of time until Jack found his way home and defeated Aku once and for all. But it took a lot longer than it probably should have. 50 years, in fact. Yeah, good thing time travel makes you stop aging for some reason. But Jack's a good-hearted soul, like a Boy Scout who hasn't discovered Twitter yet. He can be pretty gullible when it comes to more devious opponents. Also, he continues to prolong his lonely journey over and over just because he frequently puts the needs of others before his own. Still, the forces of evil should watch out for Samurai Jack. The stories that surround the two sacred headbands are as many as the men who died in their pursuit. What's so special about some strips of headcloth? Legend says they were created by the gods, or they can grant the wearer supernatural powers. But in truth, the headbands only bring pain and loss. Such was the case with Afro Samurai. <laughs> Wait! Did his parents really call him Afro? Talk about setting big expectations. Well, no, it's a nickname, but even if they did, have you seen his dad? I think they knew what to expect. Damn, just look at him. Oh, and hey look, he's got the number one headband. Here's how this works. That's the person who wears the number one headband is said to rule the world, sure and the only person who can challenge the number one is whoever possesses the number two. Uh. In contrast, anybody can challenge the owner of the number two for the right to wear that headband, and thus gain the right to challenge the number one. So, like, you just work your way up so that only one guy in the world can challenge you? 
So where do I get one of these headbands? Then no one will mess with me. Actually, the opposite would probably happen, which young Afro witnessed firsthand when some freak named Justice showed up with the number two and killed his father right in front of him. Why does this always happen? You know, I always thought parenting was the hardest thing about being a dad, but at this point, I think it's just actually staying alive if your kid's ever gonna do anything great. Or just sticking around for them. Despite knowing that he was effectively creating a future challenger, Justice left Afro alone to mourn his loss. So, of course, Afro swore revenge and started learning swordsmanship under a swordmaster named Swordmaster! Who the hell is naming these people? Through Swordmaster's training of sword mastery, Afro learned the traditional samurai fighting styles of Kenjutsu and Kendo. Kenjutsu is all about how to kill an opponent as fast as possible, while Kendo is more about discipline and being zen and stuff. Naturally, Afro preferred the more kick-ass one. Right, Swordmaster's goal was to refine Afro's body and mind, instilling upon him a sense of honor, or Bushido. But that didn't quite mesh with Afro's thirst for vengeance. So when he found out that Swordmaster had the number two headband all along, he knew what he had to do. And now he could take down the guy who killed his dad. Alongside his new friend slash burden, Ninja Ninja. Oh, come the fuck on. Where'd this guy come from? Now don't we look like shit. How you been, man? Well, it's not entirely clear. He's there, but at the same time, not there. Ninja Ninja is believed to be the guardian of the number two headband, but all he ever really does is talk, talk, and talk some more. He got arrows and grenades and shit! You ain't got no chance, dude! Though it's also possible Ninja Ninja is simply a figment of Afro's mind, brought about by psychological stress. You know, I have an imaginary friend. Aren't you a little old for that? Not for Al Gundy! He's a gun who also talks to me. He tells me to do stuff. Okay. Anyway, to be honest, calling Afro a samurai is a bit misleading. He's actually more akin to a ronin, a samurai with no master. And so, with his swordsmanship perfected, Afro wandered the world searching for justice, carrying an arsenal fit for revenge. Including his father's sword. This super long blade has lasted through decades of battle without much issue. Perfect for kicking some ass. He also has a steel comb, which can be a surprisingly effective offensive and defensive tool. And since he doesn't care about that honor BS, he's not afraid to play dirty by attacking with his sandals. But while on the road to justice, Afro's number two headband attracted all manner of dangerous enemies. Luckily, he's more than capable of dealing with each and every one of them. He's strong enough to cut other swords in half, throw his sheet through another guy's throat, and even tear off metal arms. Pretty impressive, as many modern metals have tensile strength as high as 80,000 pounds per square inch. Avro is fast enough to cut bullets out of thin air, and even a laser beam. I should note that it's not a plasma-based beam. It bounces off reflective surfaces, doesn't explode upon contact, and it's literally labeled a laser. This means Afro blocked a beam that moved as fast as light, more than 670 million miles per hour. Get this, that laser beam came from a robot version of Afro. Talk about metal, this Afro droid could easily smash up a car, and our boy Afro just tore it apart. He survived getting hit by rockets, including this RPG that fragmented a giant cliff face. RPG in a backpack? I think I smell math coming. This tree nearby is most likely a Japanese mountain ash, which can sometimes grow as high as 30 feet. With that in mind, we compared its height to the fragmentation created by the explosion, and compared the resulting surface area to the sheer force for granite. With this, we deduced the RPG's highest possible explosive yield must be around 72 tons of TNT. Damn, what kind of mega rocket launcher are these guys packing? And where do I get it? Many stood in his way, and Afro didn't get through them all unscathed. But by the end, he cut down Justice, took his revenge in hand, and proved to the world that Afro Samurai is number one. Why you gotta kill all my men? Why you gotta kill me? Nothing personal. It's just revenge. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, looking at these swords makes me want to sharpen my knives for my Blue Apron meal tonight.
Here we go. Should have got my sword. My closet. Your sword smells of blood. So does yours. I about to say you killed you. You killed a lot of robots. It was on Cartoon Network. So he's like, you know, humans. He was like Wolverine in the 90s. Sliced up a lot of robots. Specifically trained. Well, you taste good. Fire. Oh, cool. uh, thank you. I wish they could be friends. Afro was an exceptional so warrior, and his skills would absolutely dominate most no. sword fights. However, Jack has had a lot of experience with opponents who fight dirty, and Afro could not stand up to his physical superiority. Yeah, yeah Afro never showed yeah, strength like how Jack lifted that 39-ton boulder. Jack could react as fast as 70% the speed of light. Afro did block that light speed laser beam, but based on the distance between him and the Afro droid, he only needed to react around 21% the speed of light to do this, still putting him at impressive relativistic speeds, but not even half as quick as Jack. Also, while Afro survived that mega-sized yeah, RPG explosion, human, don't yeah, forget how anything. Jack survived a fall from orbit. While it does seem the spacesuit was responsible for Jack surviving re-entry, it certainly can't be held solely accountable for the final impact. Starting his descent from the Carmen line, or the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and space, Jack covered a distance of 62 miles in just, just under tougher. 7 seconds, Jake's. moving well over terminal velocity. Thanks to being propelled by exploding space beam! It's which like means that his top velocity was approximately 37,000 miles per hour. Man. Adding the spacesuit's weight to his own, this means his impact force must have equaled about so 19 yeah, megatons gravity. of force. Way more than anything Afro survived. And then he just got up and walked away. Badass. In yeah, the end, walked. Jack was just too fast, too He's strong, too tough, and too well-trained for Afro to <laughs> handle. The winner is Samurai Jack. Thanks for watching. If you guys want exclusive commentary on the episode, just click that little box right over there. And if you want the battle music from this episode, I'm not gonna lie, I, 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 I completely forgot all about the training and everything that he did. So I was like, that was so Carnage. Is that? Oh. Oh! I, I've seen this anime. But I don't. Yeah, I've seen that anime, but I don't remember that. I remember she was just walking through this, like, cutting people. I guess she, could, she had, like, some psychic thing. And uh, no one else could see it. It was very gruesome.
as anime should be. But yeah, you know, I agree with that. Like I said, I completely forget. I can't believe I forget all that shit Samurai Jack as far as like his training and stuff like that. I completely forget all that. But I was just but I, I will say I'm I'm more of a fan of Afro Samurai, so I was kinda of biased. Hey, the best man won. I mean, he lost an arm. But I'm sure he's tough. He just beat a one-armed swordsman now. We'll make, we'll make him even cooler. You know, just like any Japanese movie, you want to make your person cooler, you cut off one of their arms. And now they, they left over. Their other arm is not like super strength or some shit like that. But anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Reaction, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all on Monday. Peace.